Okay, in this video, we are going to look at another capacitor circuit. Uh, this is from Winter 17, Paper 41. And in this uh, drawing, you can see, or this circuit drawing, you can find that there are three capacitors. P and Q have the capacitance C. Connected in series with the battery of EMF, 9 volt. Very nice. Okay, so, okay, also, such and such. S is used, switch S is used to connect to the third capacitor T. Alright, which also has a capacitance C or a resistor R in parallel with P. Alright, so we kind of like have quite a few components here. We have Q and P in series with the battery, T parallel to P, which is also parallel to a resistor, which you can change. La. So you can either choose to connect P parallel to T or P parallel to the resistor, either one, okay? The switch is in position X, all right, so that means it is in this current position. Calculate the combined capacitance in terms of C. Well, this one is fairly straightforward. If you look at this uh, drawing, the combined capacitance, let's say C total, you have a P and T that are in parallel, so we settle that one first. That would be C plus C, because uh, P and T are parallel. Plus, this one, Q is in series. So this uh, 1 over C plus C plus 1 over C inverted. So just make sure you show some basic working. Lah, all right. And here, this one will look something like, um, 1 over 2C plus 1 over C and uh, if you're going to use the common denominator 2C this will be 1 plus 2 so this will be 3 over 2C inverted which will give us 2 over 3C so we're going to put that into the part below Alright, so you can see, of course, you can leave your answer as 3 over 2C, or if you prefer, I mean, sorry, 2 over 3C, or if you prefer, you can always, um, I guess, you write this in decimal point. Okay, so if they ask you to prove something in a certain expression, fraction is okay. But if they ask for a certain ratio, then fraction is not okay. Alright, so next, potential difference across capacitor Q, explain your working. Alright, let's look at where is Q. Alright, Q is on all its lonesome. So I'm going to redraw the circuit. Okay. And um, this P and T are kind of like together already anyway. So my circuit should look like this. I will have Q on its own. And this is C, capacitor Q. And uh, I'll combine P, T together into the same thing. And because they are parallel, so parallel, you just sum it up. This is 2C. Okay, this is 9 volt. Right, so how do you find the potential difference? Um, I guess across capacitor Q. Well, first step I'll do is I will, I will say that, hey, you know, guys, uh, this potential V1, and let's say this is uh, potential V2, la. All right, so a few things I know. Number one, the charge stored in this capacitor Q1 and the charge stored in this capacitor Q2 will be the same. So I'm going to start off with Q1 is equal to Q2. And I know Q is equal to C1 V1, C2 V2. So from here, I can find the ratio of V1 over V2. La. It will be C2 over C1, which is, I guess, 2C over C. So V1 over V2 will follow the ratio of 2 to 1. Okay, meaning uh, the potential is the ratio 2 to 1. And I think you can tell right now that based on the fact that V1 plus V2 must be 9. Okay, let me do slowly. V1 plus V2 is 9. Okay, so here what we can do is we can substitute law. V1 is 2 V2. Okay, let me substitute this one plus V2 is 9, so 3 V2 is 9, V2 will be 3 volt. So hence, V1 is 6 volt, because 6 plus 3 is 9. And not just 6 plus 3 is 9, 
at the same time the ratio of 6 to 3 is 2 to 1 okay so v1 is 6 volt so it depends on which one you choose to use i use a pretty long-winded but simple way of course you can use ratio if you know how to use the potential divider method the only problem with the potential divider method is that uh, it is a bit weird not weird like it's different than resistor okay uh, because the higher the capacitance the lower like 2c the lower the potential all right so that is the this part Okay, so I have moved the answers here and I just want you to notice that they say explain your working. So the explanation is actually this part. Charge stored on both plates of the capacitor is the same. If you are just feeling a bit uh, insecure, you can just say that charge uh, how should I put this? Charge stored in Q is the same as charge stored in PT. Let me zoom in a bit so you can see. So the explanation here is the charge Q1 is equal to Q2. La. That's the explanation. Or you can say charge stored in Q is equal to charge stored in the combination of PT. All right, so the potential difference here is 6.02 uh, SF. Okay, next. Switch S is now moved to position Y. All right, you can't tell me you didn't see this coming. Right, so we're going to move switch S to position Y as such okay and then to make my life easier I'm just going to crop this and put it down there so we can have a civil discussion about what happens to this give me a sec alright so now if you look at this circuit we have quite a lot of information already yeah uh, for example, I know that the potential difference here is 6. Calculated previously. Ma. And here to here is 3. Okay. So this would be 6, this would be 3. And because this is parallel, so this is also 3. So now what happens is that we will connect this to Y. Meaning this is not connected. So this T is isolated already. Alone. T will not change. But it says here that state what happens to the potential difference across capacitor P and capacitor Q. Hiya. Okay, let's look at P first. So now the problem here is P, the charge on the on inside capacitor P, right? Let's say we think about the charging mechanism all over again. So here are all the negative, 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 negative charge. And this is the positive, 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 positive charge. Alright. So this is the initial setup la. same amount of charge both plates very nice okay but now the problem here is once we close okay then okay sorry not same amount of charge la. they were split into two this one is slightly less and yes i care about being accurate so this is half split two ma. okay la. negative 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 positive 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 here got 6 and 6. Here have 3, 3, 3, 3. Okay. So when this is connected to Y, like this, this negative charges be like, A. Hey, hey, hey. You know the Hamilton reference? Hey, hey, hey. The negative charge on the capacitor, the bottom capacitor, I'm going to try to highlight. Sorry, one not very laggy already. So this negative we we'll begin to say, yo, bro, we can go like this, passing through the resistor. Though it slows it down a bit, but we can come over here to neutralize with these charges. Meaning capacitor P will discharge through the resistor. So it starts off from 3 volt and decrease to 0. 
So this is why it's four marks lah, because they want you to compare. You see, uh, state what happens to the potential difference. They only want you to state, no need to explain. But if it's four marks, uh, you have to clearly say, you cannot just say decrease. You have enough information to say decrease from where to where. So you could say the potential difference, PD, decreases from 3.0 volt to 0 volt. So decreases is one mark. To zero volt is the other mark. Okay? Means when they give us so many lines for fun. Now. But now I'm gonna write the explanation, okay? So the reason why it decreases is because the capacitor P discharges via R because the switch is at position Y. So this capacitor this this capacitor will discharge. Okay? What about Q? So this capacitor oh, started off this branch is very happy. This uh this entire branch was very happy. We were nine volt and we were in equilibrium with the EMF. Life is good. But now what happens is this three volt has dropped the ball, has become zero volt. And then the six volt is like, hey, dude, I'm supposed to be six. I'm supposed to be six. And you are supposed to be three, such that six plus three is nine. We had a plan. But you go and discharge. You go and discharge. And you abandon the plan. And now you are zero volt. So this six volt must be like, Ayo, now I have to go and do all the work. I have to go and form an equilibrium alliance with the battery. Or in other words, the battery is also like, hey, we are supposed to be nine. Why are you only six? So the battery, what the battery does is that it will send more charges as reinforcement. Okay, so more charges will come here. So basically, uh, it's as if uh, this capacitor C is not there anymore. Which one? Where, where's my mouse? Okay, there we go. This capacitor C kind of like dropped the ball. Okay, capacitor C. Capacitor P. Let me highlight this P. Okay, so this capacitor P kind of like messes things up. Lah. So because capacitor P has become to zero, you have to maintain 9. Ma. So capacitor Q will have to level up to 9. Alright. And the way it does it is it will send more charge or more charge will travel from the negative terminal of the battery. More charge will travel from the negative terminal of the battery. You might be thinking, Miss, wouldn't it need to pass, pass P? Sure, it needs to pass P. But also at the same time, even if it doesn't pass P, right? Uh, what will happen now is your P will just bypass all the charge, okay? Meaning P now becomes like a bridge. Or another way to look at it is P cannot be used anymore because whatever charge that is stored at P, sorry, computer lag, whatever charge that is stored at P because of the resistor R, P can no longer store charge. You store one electron here, it will immediately run to the opposite plate and meet, a pro meet the positive charge. You store one electron here, it will immediately run to the opposite plate. So it becomes useless. This is zero already. So this one must be nine. So the way it charges will be like this. Lah, if you are interested in knowing. The charge will travel. Okay. The charge will travel. Okay. It will travel from here. Okay. And think about the path. Is there any pathway that it can go? So that it can reach capacitor Q. Can I pass through here? Why? Why do you change my pen? Excuse me. Pass through here, 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 here. It's the same pathway, but no matter. Pass through here, here, here. So it will begin to store extra charge here. Extra to make Q. Charge in capacitor Q. Not charge la. To make potential difference across capacitor Q. To 
should make PD across Q to be Q to be nine volt. All right. So just to recap, because my computer is laggy, so what I draw and what I write is not the same thing. Why? Why you do this? I can't even run. This is such a sad, sad thing. Why you don't? What is wrong? Hello. Hmm. Hello. Okay, I'm gonna pause myself to rub this. Right. So the idea here is initially they were sharing six and three, six and three to make up nine. When three volt, when this capacitor P is no longer able to store charge, three volt drops to zero. But this entire connection, series connection, must always be 9. The battery is like, hey, excuse me, why do you drop to 0? Hello? But capacitor P is like, too bad. I am now connected to the resistor and I can always discharge. So you cannot store any more charge in P. Meaning now we need to store more charge in Q such that we can make up to 9 volt. So you can see all the black arrows. The charge will now go towards Q. To add more charge, so this side will be induced, okay? So extra charge to make the potential difference of Q to be 9 volt, okay? Which means uh, Q will go from 6 to 9. You might be also wondering, well, miss, Q cannot discharge through R, meh? Cannot? Look at it. How can a negative charge meet the positive charge? You might say, oh, the negative charge can flow through R. Dude, current or is a one-way circuit. So if the electrons came to this plate from R, the electrons cannot flow back to R. There's no black flow. Back flow. Second problem, you might be thinking, now mine, can we not go through P? Uh, same idea. Lo. The charge in P, look at the green arrow flows in this direction. If you decide the electron to go here, you have to reverse against this black arrow. There's no way for this negative charge to meet the positive plate. Whereas for P, there's a very straightforward way for the negative charge here to go back and meet the positive plate. All right, think about it. So this means the potential difference will go from six when capacitor P was still working to nine. Because now capacitor P not working, have to match the power supply 9 volt. Okay, so you could say here the PD increases from 6.0 volt to 9.0 volt. What's the explanation? To maintain the potential difference of 9.0 volt which is the same as the potential difference of the power supply across the terminals of the battery. All right, so this part is a bit anomalous and also a little bit tricky, but otherwise the entire question is okay. So the important thing here is to understand the charging and discharging mechanism, not just merely memorize the equation, or if not, then you start there. I put the switch here, I put the switch there, I connect here, I connect there, then gone now. Alright, so I hope you find this video helpful. Sorry if I blabbered too long. The lag can't be helped. Okay, so the whole idea again is that the charge have to be, have to make the potential equal to the power supply. Alright, so that's it for this question. If you need any help or clarification, you can comment down below or you could share the video subscribe, click like, and I will see you in the next one. Hopefully it's not this like, what is this? Okay, there we go. Bye-bye.